is the lens behind the picture? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey everyone, welcome to our Google Hangout celebrating Kids Night on Broadway. I'm here with the fabulous ladies of Cinderella, Fran Drescher and Carly Rae Jepsen. Yay! <laughs> I hope you're clapping along out there. We're so glad you're here and we want to remind everyone that we're celebrating Kids Night on Broadway here in New York City, which is so amazing. Um, an adult that buys a theater ticket for participating shows gets to bring a kid or a teenager or etc. Uh, age 6 to 18 free, wow. which is so amazing. Plus there are other events and deals going on with restaurants and uh, things to do here in New York City. And Kids Night on Broadway goes on across the country in theaters um, near and far, putting their own special spin on it with participating shows and also their own kind of special events and things. So check out kidsnightonbroadway.com to find out what's going on here in New York City and near you. Yeah. So Makes me want to have a kid. Right. <laughs> I can't pass up a bargain. <laughs> Get busy, Fran. Get busy. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is so wonderful to meet both of you and to visit here with people across the country, teens, kids, moms, dads, friends, theater lovers across the country. And so the big question I know on everyone's mind, it is so cool that you both made your Broadway debuts on the same night in Cinderella, Rodgers and Hammerstein Cinderella, the gorgeous <laughs> production at the Broadway Theater. So how did it feel? Tell us, tell us everything. Well, I mean, it was. I was so glad that she was in it with me because we went through the whole rehearsal process together. That's cool. And so it didn't feel like I was doing it all by myself and entering a group that was already established. And uh, it's just such a loving group, and she's so awesome. You know, she Fans said once, it. you know, oh, I think I want to throw everybody a pizza party, and I'm thinking, well, I should get in on that. I mean, she's so sweet and nice. She thought of it before me. <laughs> <laughs> we were, I think we were both just so, um, like, excited to come in and, and take on this project together. And I think every time you got nervous, or at least for me, I would look at Fan, it would feel more confident just knowing that we were, like, taking on this Aww. adventure together. Yeah. We always take moments backstage and even on the stage where we... You have little signals of support for each other. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, it's helpful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Strength in numbers. Yeah, exactly. Um, we're going to actually be taking some questions from all of you out in Hangout Land. So um, start sending them in. We've got some great ones already. But I also want to just find out while we're while everyone's sending in their questions, what you've both experienced so many different kinds of performing music business. TV, etc. What made Broadway special or different as you've um, not only made your debuts but gone on for this period of time in the show? Well, you know, I, I've I've always loved Broadway. I grew up in New York, and so I think that it defines what New York City is all about. And in fact, when we were doing The Nanny, we paid homage to Broadway by making Mr. Sheffield a Broadway producer <laughs> yes. just to have the millions of people that watched The Nanny really get caught up in the glamour and fantasy and wonder of the Broadway theater community. So yeah. it's, I think it's always been something if you're an actor, you know, Broadway is just the epitome. There's no second take. It's really flying without a net. And it's its own community. The people are really tight and uh, very supportive. Every time someone leaves the show, at the end of the show, uh, backstage, everybody sings happy trails to you. Oh, so sweet. And they so do it sweet. every time. <laughs> <laughs> what about for you? Yeah, I think the artist in me just has always really admired um, the bravery that a Broadway show would take. And, and sort of, I was attracted by what a challenge it would be to take on not just the singing aspect, but the acting roles and the dancing, which is so new to me. Um, but Broadway has been a dream of mine since I was a very little girl. And when uh, I knew that Cinderella was, was a, a possibility, I, I put everything I had into it because I knew that it was on my bucket list to one 
and I'd be involved in a Broadway show. And Cinderella, I mean, that's the dream of all dreams, and I couldn't have asked for a more exciting role. And you're so graceful when you dance. Honestly, I'm in the wings during the waltz, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, even the way she holds her hands and everything, I thought to myself, oh, she's probably taken a lot of dance lessons her whole oh, life. thank you, yes. yeah. <laughs> It's a love fest here at the Hangout tonight on Broadway. We've got some great questions coming in. Let's get right to them. Um, what, oh, and this is a good one. Rachel wants to know, what is your favorite costume in the show? Because there's so many great costumes. Mm. I mean, I have to say I love... I love your the fur. Russian one. I yeah. love your fur. Yeah. She had her she had her costumes designed specifically for her character because she kind of came in and reinvented the wicked stepmother, which I was I thought was so cool of you to do. Yeah, glamorous. Um, she sexy. she made a very stylish <laughs> wicked like stepmother. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and there's this one fur. I'll let you explain it. It's a fake fur, but uh, the hat is really big, and then my hair is coming out of the top Ooh. of the hat. And I wear this huge cape, and I get to whack my daughter with it when I <laughs> throw it over my shoulder. It's, it's fantastic. really fun. It's really fun. And you really come to life when you're in the costumes. I know from rehearsing just um, in our regular day outfits, we'd have these rehearsal skirts. But mm -hmm. the, the moment that you put on the costume, I feel like that's half of, of, of your job is done for you. I felt very yeah. much like I became Cinderella when all of a sudden I got to try on the glass slippers yes. and, and try on that amazing ball gown. But I think mine would have to be. Um, the wedding dress. Mm -hmm. the wedding dress um, is gorgeous. Yeah, William Ivy Long created this amazing wedding dress that is just to die for. I feel like every night I put it on and get married to the prince, I'm like, my real wedding's not going to top this. <laughs> <laughs> it's so gorgeous. <laughs> now you've got plenty of inspiration. Yeah, exactly. Um, Rachel wants to know what is the hardest part of the rehearsal process? Mm. Well, uh, for me, I think it was um, you rehearse in a room where there isn't the, for the scenery. You're not on the stage. You're really in a rehearsal hall, they mm -hmm. call it. And it's just some walk-up little rickety room, and they have a guy sitting at a piano, and you have to kind of imagine. All of it. All of it. Right. And you just kind of, you know, they'll have like, a table that's a, you make believe is something else, and a chair and a cardboard box that's a pumpkin. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. You kind of run with it. That, I yeah. agree. That is. And then it was either always too hot or too cold. <laughs> 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 we were always taking on and off our sweaters. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I found it to be a challenge. I think. Um, I think some of the moments where you don't have a line or you don't have an action but you're just on stage and somebody else is, is singing for example um, my fairy godmother has a lot of numbers where I'm just sort of I'm just sort of enjoying her song yeah. and I feel like that for me was a challenge of finding sort of what to do in that moment and, and how to get lost in it without really just kind of getting lost in it like a listener <laughs> um, and, and I think those are still my challenges on uh, every night is to kind of be a part of, of that moment and, and not like steal her thunder but not totally get totally swept away where I'm just an audience <laughs> <laughs> all of a sudden. I think that's my huge I know. challenge. I can see where yeah. you would get caught up in that. I'm so yeah. scared that I wouldn't be able to dance and sing and say my words she can do that all. all at the same time. <laughs> I was so nervous that I wasn't going to, because until you kind of have it memorized, until you know it, it's like you're trying to remember everything. Yeah. So there's no real fluidity to it. Yeah. But everybody said, you know, it comes, it comes. Just keep doing it. And eventually, and now it, it does. Yeah. You can get lost. It does. It's amazing. Yeah. You're feeling comfortable now that yeah. you've been at it for a little bit. I think. I think I'm equally um, excited by the fact that it's getting more and more. Um, yeah, home like familiar. I feel more. I feel more familiar with it, but I also think that part of the challenge is is also kind of walking it with intention of like, okay, today I want to try this, and mm. I really have made a discovery in this part last week, so I want to go further with it. And I think that's the beautiful part about this is is even though it's the same thing every night, there's never. A, a moment where it gets boring, and you can't let it get boring. You just have to kind of go out there and be like, okay, so this scene feels tighter. Now let's work on more energy in this one. And and that continual challenge is, I think, what what makes me want to stay longer and longer. Yeah, yeah. Woo, it's that's living good art news for Broadway. <laughs> it's like a living art form. It's always kind of morphing into, and you're also playing for different audiences every night. Yeah, and the audience has a different personality. Yeah, that's true. Different yeah. energy. Sometimes they're really time. loud and raucous, and other times they 
kind of quiet, but I'm convinced they're enjoying it equally. As much. <laughs> yes, we are convinced too. Um, Caitlin wants to know from both of you how you got started in theater as kids or like as as younger women. Well, when when I was a little girl, I um. I kind of grew up just obsessed with theater. I thought I was always going to be diving for this dream, and um, I got a little distracted in my teens with pop music. <laughs> but but um, at, at the my community theater in Mission BC, um, we didn't have a lot going on, but we had an amazing theater in one of the schools, and we put on so many productions. I was um, the Ghost of Christmas Past in um, a, a Christmas Carol, and Annie, and Dorothy, and uh, I got to place. Sandy in Greece, so I was really lucky because it was a small town and I got a lot of really money rolls and I just um, had an amazing teacher who really kind of pushed me to keep going with that and keep kind uh, of learning as much as I could. Teachers are so two, important. In, yeah, David yeah. Fire at Beverly Homes, kind of my godmothers at the time. Yeah, <laughs> Shout out! Yeah, and, um, and then all of a sudden um, I went to a performing arts school after that that was all based on like singing, dancing, and acting. After school, or it was on the weekends, I would go, and uh, and then I decided that I really wanted it, and I was still a teenager, but I I, I started breaking into it professionally, oh. getting a picture and trying to get an agent and going up on commercials and auditions for you know television and stuff. Yeah. Wow, I love hearing this stuff. Um, Kurt has a question. He wants to know from Fran, do kids of today's generation know you from the nanny? Absolutely. I there are people so. that weren't even alive when I was shooting the nanny, and now they're huge fans of it. You know, once a television show becomes like classic TV, uh, it just goes on and on. And honestly, for the last 20 years, it hasn't been off the air one single day Whoa. around the world. So wherever I am, I you know, uh, people kind of know me and recognize me as the nanny because of my distinctive voice, and also <laughs> because I'm told that I really haven't changed that you much. You haven't. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Love it. Um, Jess wants to know what was your favorite Broadway show as a kid. That's a good I one. have a. I have a toss-up. I have a few. I really loved My Fair Lady. I still think that one is amazing. Um, and Another then, good role for you one day. As a movie or a show? As a musical, the movie. I, yeah. I didn't actually oh, see. I didn't see the the live musical. Live musicals that I fell in love with. Jesus Christ Superstar. The music in that is so good. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And um. And I grew up watching Fiddler on the Roof on repeat. Nice. It was, so I think those are my top three right now that I can think of. Yeah, because in the movies, you know, in the movies, I loved The Sound of Music, My oh, yeah. Fair Lady, Mary Poppins, West Side Story. I mean, I grew up with all, watching all those on television. And uh, Funny Girl, mm -hmm. all of those were great. In the theater, I think one of my first shows that I went to see uh, was A School Trip. And I think it was a chorus line, mm -hmm. and Greece we went to see. Yeah. And uh, and then I went to see Godspell at the Cherry Lane Theater, which is in the Village, and it was a small theater, and it was kind of like a cool show. And I thought, wow, you know, this is what I want to do. Oh, That's amazing. I love these. This is so cool. Um, we also have another great question for Carly from Tina, she wants to know, how does singing on Broadway compare to a concert? Mm. Oh, good question. I mean, the lovely thing about, um, I mean, there's totally different. I, I think it, it can't really compare it. Um, I think my voice is my voice to an extent, but I have been trying with Broadway to, um, to sing in a, a more classical way than I would normally. When I'm um, on the road and I'm singing my own material, I'm able to kind of use the little like 
uh, pop characteristics that 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 I would use for my regular stuff. And when I'm singing Cinderella, they'll sneak in every once in a while. But I'm trying generally to um, to sing in a different way. It's uh, it's been kind of a month of just learning how to do this. So I feel like I'm just starting to get my grasp on it. But um, other than that, the actual performance itself is different because I think there's more spontaneity in my own concert. Mm -hmm. I'm able to gauge on my mood of like, I'm not really feeling this song today, let's cut it or let's do just an acoustic set for these two numbers. And I always am pulling people on stage and kind of deciding what if I'm going to do a costume change and it's it's very in my hands, which is which is a lot of fun. Yeah. But what's interesting about the Cinderella thing, I mean, I can't just decide to to go stage left because I feel like it or or make the, the the crowd sing along for this one number. It's it's very planned out. It's very a uh, machine that I'm a part of. But there's something lovely about getting lost in this group story and and having my piece in it. But also it kind of relieves a little bit of pressure. You just kind mm -hmm. of get to enjoy the story of Cinderella versus like okay I'm I'm on stage with these people for an hour and I got to make all yeah, this energy. You. Yeah, it's just you. Um, so I'm actually feeling like this is a little bit. Um, of a nice change right now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, what a great answer. Very well said. <laughs> um, Good girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like she needs our vote of oh. <laughs> 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 um, we have another really good one. Um, it's two different questions for each of you from Sarah to Carly. What can kids learn from Cinderella today? That's a really good one. And to Fran, before as the nanny, you were kind of a Cinderella. Now as the evil stepmother, how do you see yourself on stage? Really good questions. Okay. Uh, well, for, for my answer, I would say that um, the main message in this story is uh, spreading kindness. Um, and Cinderella, I think the classic tale that we all know is about this this beautiful young girl who, um, you know, one day meets a prince and he rescues her from this st terrible stepmother. And, <laughs> and, and that's it's just this lovely fairy tale, which is very attractive in some ways. But I think what's cool about the, the latest spin that we're doing is that she's also a girl who wants to change the world and she wants to make things better. And yes, she wants the prince and she wants to find love, but it's, it's more of an equal playing field. She's changing him. He He's helping her. It's um, a beautiful kind of updated twist on this story. And I think um, her goodness is just uh, contagious. And when you're around her, you you are attracted by it. And all the people in the story get changed by knowing Cinderella. And I think that is a, a lovely message for girls and, and guys and everyone to take home with them, that you can inspire change by being that, that, that kind person. Yeah, that's really great, really great. Well, I've never played a character that was despicable. <laughs> You're not totally despicable. No, I, I, I mean, at the end, I come around. And Eventually, Cinderella lays off on YouTube. I can be pretty too. nasty. I know it's true. I, uh, but, um, and, and at first, it was a little hard for me to adjust to that, that people might not, you know, like my character. Uh, but I think, actually, I found her truth, mm -hmm. why she is the way she is. I, I've had it make sense to me when I'm doing it, and uh, it doesn't mean she's right in the way she treats Cinderella, but uh, I've, I've created in my head <laughs> a story that justifies why she's become as negative a person as she is. Uh, within that, though, I do, you know, get my laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> and, uh, and she's very glamorous and wears gorgeous costumes and stuff. So she's someone you kind of love to hate. And I, I think, look forward to seeing her come, you know, into the show. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, by the end, I think that, uh, well, you know, she forgives me. <laughs> Sorry, I, I do have to yeah. say, meeting you today is, of course, such a dream come true, both of you. Um, but it really is hard to believe that you're playing like an evil character because you're so. so I'm the hooker with the heart of God. That's what I always play. <laughs> exactly. We do have another question for you from Lexi. She wants to know what's the biggest difference between acting on TV and acting on stage. Well, there's no take two, for one. You know, you make a mistake, you got to just keep on going. You can't say, oh, can we shoot that again? So <laughs> there's this kind of, uh, you know, uh, 
pressure that goes along with being on stage that you really don't have on a sound stage because you know that if you you know fall on your face they're going to shoot it again mm -hmm. so i would say that's the biggest thing because all of the sitcoms that I shot, we did do in front of a live audience. Yes. And so I did have that feeling of the immediacy of having the audience laugh, having the audience receive me. We'd come out for, you know, introductions. We'd uh, do our applause, just like we were putting on a little play every mm -hmm. week. So in that regard, you know, it actually is very similar. And I'm used to playing to, you know, a proscenium out to an audience. Yeah. But the idea that... You just have to keep on going. And mm -hmm. if you screw something up, you just have to keep on going. Yeah. And just can keep going. <laughs> yeah. And don't, you know, like I would think like, oh, my God. I mean, I've made a couple of blunders. And um, at first I would really beat myself up about it. But everybody in the cast assured me that, uh, A, the audience really doesn't know the difference. If you say this word or that word or you drop the line, they don't really know. As long as you just keep on going, right. you know, it's over as soon as it's done. Mm -hmm. So now I'm kind of used to it. And it's like if I make a mistake, it's like, oh, well. <laughs> That's the I spirit. feel better. I feel better about it. I'm more forgiving of myself. Yeah. Oh, well, that's good. But yes, it is good. Something good comes out of it. Um, not just, you know, being on Glamorous Broadway. Um, from Lisa, I love this one. Would you two ever want to switch roles? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well. I mean, I think absolutely it would be so much fun to, to wear your costumes and take on an, an, a more meaty evil character sometimes but I think that that would be something that um, I would I would need uh, a, another whole amount of time to like take on <laughs> yeah. I don't think I could just do it right now in fact I would find it really intimidating and scary to have to switch right away but I think yeah I think that totally there's parts of your character that absolutely attract me I don't think that I could do justice to the singing <laughs> as well as she Aww. does so you know even though it it's such a romantic I mean, I watch her and the prince falling in love night after night, and <laughs> it's just, well, it makes me want to go home to my boyfriend. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's one from Jenna. She wants to know, what's your quickest costume change and any mishaps yet? Mm, well, you have the big... You one. have the big transformation. I have lady. a lot Should of... I take a drink of this or no? Yes, yes, <laughs> I think you should. I, can? Um, okay. I, have, I have quite a few on stage transformations and they happen um, well they're supposed to kind of happen before your eyes like rags to riches like right. that and um, I've had a couple mishaps in the one dress rehearsal that we had <laughs> for sure but so far I've only kind of yeah I've had a little bit of trouble with one of them but nothing oh, remember devastating. When my shoe she oh. has to change my shoes and it was like we had a missing shoe. shoe. The shoe Ooh. went And that was the it? first time we almost started giggling on the stage. I we that, couldn't oh, find never the mind. Shoe, no, and we were just a little bit And somehow it ended up on the other side. We know, were we room. were running around the stage like chickens with our heads cut off. And we, we kinda missed our cues a couple of times. <laughs> Anything yeah. that could have gone wrong in that scene in that it moment did, did go yeah. wrong. But you you lived through it. And yeah, you we lived through it. The audience probably enjoyed it because of it, you know? <laughs> no, Moral support when we remember That's that. Right. <laughs> I love it. You're all bonded. I love oh, it. Yeah, we Broadway totally bonding. Are. We totally are. We want to perform together my... and my... not be in the show without each other. Yeah, I know. Oh, that is so cool. That's one of the things that I love the most about theater is you become a little family, and it's so nice to see that it's happened already. Yeah, yeah. you do. You totally, do. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Um, what, what, let's see. This question is, who inspires you? And I, I guess that's pretty open-ended, I, you know, but I'll, I'll leave it to you, whether it's a performer or... I have a whole list of people that inspire me. Mm. I, I, I have a hard time picking one to kind of rule out the others, but um, we were talking about this today. I think from our lunch conversation, I'll say my, my mother is very, very inspiring. Good answer. Um, and my stepmother as well, too. I, I'm lucky enough to have two, so they're both very inspiring women. I would say that's my answer. Yeah, I'm very close with my mom, and my manager is like a second mom to me. And uh, I, you know, I love Hillary Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh-huh. That, was, that one came out of left field. That was like, me uh-huh. too. Uh-huh. <laughs> I Hill. <laughs> Can we call you Hill? Uh-huh. <laughs> I love that. Well, I'm just going to go all the way into the cheesy moment and say you both inspired me. Oh, well, oh, thank you. Yes, thank yes. you. That's very sweet. You Absolutely. I mean, both of you have so much talent. Um, I really respect that you're doing live theater, which is no joke. And, um, and both of you, I mean, you've inspired so many young people and um, <laughs> you. are helping them follow some of their dreams because they see it happen for you and it makes them aspire. And Ms. Fran Drescher, <laughs> when, you have just been an inspiration to me for just a, practically as long as I can remember you lighting up my television screen. So thank, thank you, you for that. Well, yeah. I just want to say, you know, I, in my organization, cancerschmanza.org, we have the WTF move Junior League. So, Ooh. you know, if you're a kid and if you're watching this, you probably are. Mm-hmm. Go to cancerschmanza.org and check out our WTF Junior League because we're That's doing perfect. some great stuff and teaching kids and having kids teach their parents how to live a preventative lifestyle. Oh, I'm so glad you brought that up. That's terrific. I'm going to squeeze one more question in here if I can. It's from Mark, and he wants to know if you've been able to see any other shows while you've been in town, and if so, what's your fave? Oh, I have. Mm. I've seen a lot, actually. Yeah, tell Um, us, tell us. My favorite, probably, um, I really love Book of Mormon, but I think my favorite was Waiting for Godot. It's actually a, a play, not a musical, um, and I just loved it. It was so, 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 so good. And it has the sirs, Patrick Stewart and Ian McKellen, and they were I, just so amazing. I could go three times in a row and still be entertained, uh, yeah. and that's not normal for anyone. Yeah. Yeah, so. Now, we're on a schedule where we can, uh, Monday is our only night off, otherwise we're, uh, you know, with all the other shows. Exactly. So it's very hard to see shows. You must have seen that when we were in we rehearsal. Were rehearsal yeah, time. Yeah, I figured. And I was too tired <laughs> 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 to go to the theater during the rehearsal. But, um, you know, uh, Tyler said that in, on Monday nights they have Rocky, and he went and he thought that was great. And, of course, Wicked is still playing 10 yep. years now. 10 years. And that was amazing. And that's kind of the prequel to The Wizard of Oz. Exactly. And I feel like there's a prequel to Cinderella called Wicked Stepmother. <laughs> <laughs> Producers, are you listening? everything. <laughs> I hope someone's getting that message. That, that needs to happen. That needs to happen. Oh my goodness. This has been such a blast. I'm so actually much. sorry that it has to has to end, but these ladies do have a show to do. We have a show tonight. Show yeah. must go on. Absolutely. I gotta go become a princess. Well, yes. you. <laughs> I gotta be a wicked stepmother. Transform. <laughs> So just to remind everyone, it's Kids Night on Broadway through this Sunday. Go to kidsnightonbroadway.com for all the participating shows. There are still tickets available, and we're so excited that we've been able to do these hangouts this week with some of your favorite Broadway stars. And, you know, you can come and dress like Cinderella, which a lot of kids do, Ooh. whether you're a girl or a boy. Ooh. Ooh. Come, come, come. That and is so great. They all so wear tiaras. Great. They sell tiaras in the lobby. I love to hear that. That's amazing. Yeah, I really actually fun. got a Cinderella tiara on my last birthday, and I wore it with pride of all course. night. Oh, there's <laughs> a lot of princess competition going on. And yeah, and yeah, exactly. <laughs> but we're glad, we, we're glad you're here on Broadway getting the corner on the princess market. Yeah. And um, and so just to remind everyone, too, kidsnightonbroadway.com also has all of your details for the events going on in theaters around the country. So just get out there and see a show. Fran Drescher and Carly Ray Jepsen, thank you so much for being Bye. on our hangout. Thank you, everybody. Peace.